pre done, good stuff, the Scots, all right? We had the nice stuff. Set it up, set the plat, had it ready to go, and started planning stuff. And absolutely nothing happened. And then about four months later, I went out to check on it, and we had overgrown, and it reached out into my side driveway, and I was sitting here thinking, well, I'm not eating any of this stuff. I'm going to go get some ramen. And that was really our experience with planting. So, so I'm really intrigued by the story, so I'm like, God, you must be a green thumb. Because you do a really good job of making things grow. So the first thing I want us to look at is, is the first image that God gives us. And it's this. He says that the farmer scatters seed on a road. Correct? In Mark 4, verse 14 and 15, he says this. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. I call this a hard heart. The condition of our soil is sometimes hard. See, because we might believe that Christ is king, but there are some passages in Scripture we just don't want to deal with. We, won't, we like the idea that God is a God who gives us abundance, and God is a God who gives us overflow, but we don't like the idea that Paul says that he counts it as joy to take part in the sufferings of Christ. We don't like the fact that the Bible tells us that if we are to represent Christ, then that means that we are going to be hated for it. See, you and I sometimes, we have really hard hearts. Because we take this book, and we stick to the passages we like. We stick to the Psalms that talk about us rising up over our enemies and the obstacles we have at work. But man, we don't like the attitude that God says that we should have towards our authority, which is to serve them. And to love our enemies. And what God says is for these types of people, their hearts are hardened, that he's trying to plant the word of truth in them, but it lands on the ground. And you guys have seeds right next to you, and you can start passing them around. But I tempt you, throw one on the ground and see what happens. It's going to stay right there until I step on it, some kid eats it, or a bird flies in from somewhere and takes it. This is what God is saying about you and I's heart. That if we are hardened to all of his words, we are limited in the amount that we can grow. Not only that, but God later says that we are like rocks at times. That we're like seeds planted in rocks. And I love what it says in this passage. Others like seeds sown in rocky places hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. How many of you guys feel like that sometimes? Just like you have a defeated heart. You read the Bible, there are so many promises in it that God gives us, and you don't see them coming up hard in your own life. I tell you, that is a really difficult thing for me. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, and I just don't want to do it anymore. It's too hard, God. Doing it your way is too hard. If you, if you accepted Christ, we all know that there's a moment, right? There's that moment when we knew he was king. Do you remember that day? Do you remember that moment when we ran to him? He ran to us, rescued us, and picked us up? So this passage is talking about. There was a joy we had. There was a fire we had when that moment came. But all of a sudden, we had a job. And we got married. And we had kids. And we had bills to pay. And our air conditioning unit broke down three times in a row. And the home warranty company is of no help. And in those days, we want to look at God and say, God, what are you talking about? We've got creditors knocking on our door. Pressure at work. And the joy of our salvation has been taken away from us. And the reason why is because of this. We were never soil that was ready for deep roots. If you guys want a remedy to that situation, if you're feeling defeated today, might I suggest to you that we do this? Go deeper in the ground. See, so because the sun can scorch and get rid of a small, flimsy flower. But it cannot do anything to an oak tree. And a hurricane can come and rip out a bunch of different trees, but it can't do anything to a tree that is firmly planted in the ground. And today what I want you guys to think about is this, is how deep have I gone into Scripture? How deep have I gone into community? One of the most beautiful images I can think of is when there was hurricanes coming through the state of Florida, you would see trees get ripped up and fly, but they were usually the trees that were by themselves. If you had trees that were firmly rooted in the ground, that had a root system that was intersected and connected, 
No matter how much wind came, those trees might bend, but they weren't going anywhere. And today, if I ask you, and we're really candid with each other, how many of us have great biblical community? Because I want, I want you to hear this. Church is not this building. And church is not sitting in the chair you're sitting in. Church is the community you have with people who, as it says in Acts 2, break bread together, pray together, are devoted to the apostles' teachings together, and serve together. Do you have a community like that? Because if you don't, I can promise you that, that being defeated is either now or going to be coming your way. One of the most powerful things for me coming here to Orlando was being able to start an Acts 2 community that meets on Tuesday nights. 17 people, 40 years old, 6 years old, in the same room, praying and worshiping God together and breaking bread together. That has been the thing that has held me together. As a newly married man, as a person transitioning here back to Orlando from a small town, it's my community that has held me together. Are you part of a small group? What's your community? Because here's the thing, if you have community with people that aren't rooted in the gospel, that aren't rooted in Christ, when the sun beats down on you, because it's a noonday sun and it's coming every day, you will be scorched. And when the winds blow and the trials come, you will be swept away. But it's rooted in the gospel, rooted in community, that you and I can thrive and prosper. What type of soil are you in? You see, the, the, the third thing that the farmer does is the farmer scatters seed, and he scatters seed in a really precarious place. He scatters it in seed where there's scatters it in soil where there are thorns. And I call this the weed issue of our hearts. It's really where our heart is divided. You see, in the scriptures it says this in verse 18 and 19. I just want to read this to you because I think it's so true. This is Jesus explaining this parable to his people. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, the hear it, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things, come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Francis Chan is a, a pastor and author of a book uh, called Crazy Love, and, and he writes specifically about Mark 4, and this, these are the words he says. It's on your message notes. Thorns are things that distract us from God. When we want God and a bunch of other stuff, then that means we have thorns in our soil. Francis Chan goes on to say that this is the condition of the American church. That you and I like the idea of Jesus as Savior. And you and I like the idea of Jesus as being correct theology. But you and I may not like the idea of Jesus saying, you have to give up everything to follow me. See, Satan plant seeds as well. And they're thorny. And if we were to check our schedule, if we were to check our wallet, if we were to check our dining room table, if we were to check the TV shows that are on in our home, do we have a divided heart? Because the gospel can be planted in your children every single Sunday. But if they go home to a house that exalts the world, if they go home to a house that exalts money, then those seeds are being choked out by the thorns of the enemy. And parents, adults, if your desire is to see your children grow up to be trees that produce, trees that produce fruit, you want them to be about the gospel, does your schedule permit you to be about the gospel? Because that's the reality. I'm, I'm working with students right now in, inside uh, this church and then within the community of Orlando. Um, I'm teaching them how to go through the scriptures and what it means to become a leader. And one of the biggest issues I run into and the reason why we haven't gotten further into this process is I've got kids that continually come up to me and say, Colin, I'm just too busy. I can't read what you told me to read. It's, it's, I just can't read the Bible. I want to, but I can't. And I want to be like, you're in high school. What could you possibly be doing? But can I be real with you for a minute? They learned that from mom and dad. 
Because mom and dad, I'm too busy to go to small group. There's too many things on my schedule. I'm too busy.